Hey everybody, we are teaching Tilt Brush. And this particular Tilt Brush is all about getting nice, sharp, clean shapes. Whether you want spheres or cubes or pyramids, getting those shapes nice and sharp can be kind of tricky in Tilt Brush, even using guides. If I put on a cube, most attempts at making a perfect cube will have very rough edges. So for example, if I have a cube, nice little cube, and I just go in with any old brush, for example, my textured brush, there we go, nice thick paint textured brush. If I try to make this a perfect cube, even if I'm very steady with my hand, you can see how the edges aren't always going to line up. Even if I'm careful on the corners, it might not be a perfect cube. You can start to see how things overlap, edges don't line up quite right. Even if I used a flat, simple brush, like a magic marker, it looks like it should give me a nice, clean edge. So when I paint along those edges, especially in the corners and things, it can be tough to make it as sharp as I want. I keep getting little blemishes. You can see how this line has the little blemish. Or if I now come in on this side, the corners might not line up. So when I hide the guide, you can see how the corners and edges, no matter how careful I am, aren't perfect. So there are some tools that are better than others for making these types of primitive shapes. So what we're going to look at is getting some clean primitive shapes. Now some of them can be done with the tools themselves. For example, we actually have a pyramid tool called spikes. If I have a large based brush, there we go, large based brush, and I have a straight edge active, now when I draw this, you can see how it's a nice, perfect pyramid. Even if I move it around, you can see how it stays nice and sharp. Straight edge with some of our tools will allow us to give us nice, perfect, simple versions of the shape we're looking for. If we wanted something more cubical, Technically, the hull brush with a large base, I'm going to go dinosaur size with a large base, it is drawing in a rectangle shape. You can see that. So if I now shrink down, I have a large rectangle cube. The problem with a hull brush as a single stroke, however, is one end of it tends to be rounded, pointy top of a domed building, that type of thing. So it won't give you a nice cube. Like if I was trying to draw a birthday present in a big box, these shapes aren't going to help. We actually can use the guide for these types of primitive shapes. However, the brush we choose will determine how easy it's going to be. So let me get up a normal cube here. And most brushes will have troubles with corners and things. Our favorite hull brush, so I'm going to turn off my straight edge and go for the hull. I'm going to go for the one with shadows. Now the trick here is, if I have a large base, my corners are going to be rough. Even if I'm perfectly straight on par, you can see it is giving me a nice cube, but I'm still having the problem with the corners with the edges being rounded, not a perfect cube shape. So what I'm going to do is instead, come back here please, I'm going to go for a very, very skinny, tiny hull. That means the point of drawing is going to be right on the edge here. So when I draw along from corner to corner to corner, the tiny hull brush gives us a perfect flat surface that's right on the surface of our guide. Now let's bring this over here. I'm going to do very quickly all six. You just have to remember to touch all four corners. And now hide the guide. So you can see it really is a perfect cube. Sharp corners, sharp edges. Tiny hull brush with the guide. 
most important, now that I've got it nice shape, I'm going to select the whole darn thing. Each side is still a separate piece. So select all of it and group it. Now I can be sure to move it around, select something else, select it again and move it around, and be sure to get the whole thing. So be sure when you've got your perfect shape, select it all and group it. So cubes and that type of shape is fine. Spheres. Now if you're lucky enough to be connected to a PC or to a PlayStation VR, you can actually do the circle trick. So I'm gonna grab my favorite hull brush and add the straight edge and the circle trick. Circle, sphere. Now on the PC and PlayStation, if you are persistent and irritated, it will eventually, come on guys, there we go, give you that sphere. Oh, I put me right to back to the beginning, I kept going. But that's, here we go. Now this is indeed a perfect sphere and only the PC and PlayStation can do that. Quest users, if you can link, you can do that too, but on your own, it'll get the circles and that's it. You'll notice it's also perfect. It looks artificial. We can't get a smooth round sphere this way, but the hull you choose or the brush you choose will help control the surface a little bit. This one being our standard hull brush. So I'm gonna move that over here. So my alternative for Quest users, for example, is grab that sphere guide and again using a really skinny, tiny hull. Now the disadvantage, if you just do it quick and sloppy, it's not going to look perfect. Hide the guide. You can see my sphere is kind of lumpy, kind of misshapen. Put the guide back. If you are persistent or take your time, the more you wrap around the sphere, the more of those little holes you can patch. You do not have to do it all in one stroke. If you're quick and sloppy, you might see seams, but if you're persistent and really try to cover that sphere from all angles, now when I hide the guide, this sphere's not bad and it has a much more natural feeling. So maybe I'm doing an outer space with planets, or maybe this is a sculpture that looks like hand chiseled. It's not gonna be the perfect polygon, but we're gonna have these slight differences, slight changes. The lighting really helps here. Again, I drew this in more than one piece, so I'm gonna to remember to select all those pieces and group them together. Now that whole thing counts as one solid piece. So it's still using a tiny hull brush on the guide. But with our curved shapes, we are going to need to be much more careful. So things like an ellipse. I'm going to change the shape of my ellipse a little bit. So I can still do this. Here's my submarine hot air balloon. Using my tiny hull, but again, I'm gonna to need to spend plenty of time taking the time, getting all the edges, all the corners, coming in from different angles. The more time you take, the more smooth a finish you're gonna have here. Let's get all the way down to the edges, get it from some different directions and things. So when I hide the guide, I have a nice smooth lozenge. So a tiny, tiny hull plus the guide. Pretty straightforward. One last point here. Because we're doing this with a tiny hull and the guide, we are not limited to perfect shapes. One of the questions I get in the YouTube is how could I do a bite out of it? Maybe an apple with a bite out of it or Pac-Man moving along. I've got the overall shape since I'm drawing this by hand, I can pick and choose where to draw. And I can do it in more than one stroke. So I'm gonna to switch to a nice bright yellow here. And now I'm gonna draw part of the sphere. Now I'm gonna draw part of the sphere. Now I'm gonna make sure I fill in this side 
Get some good details, get some good smooth roundness going here. But I'm going to leave the front part alone. Hide the guide. Select. And group. And now I've got this guy. Anybody from my generation will know he's eaten many quarters in this world. But now we're getting control of these shapes. Not even perfect shapes, but variations, alterations. You can see how with careful adjustment, you could take bites out of apples, craters and moons. It'll take a little more work, a little more time. But anything with a lot of detail is going to take a lot of time anyway. We're here in Tilt Brush because we want to build these things. So take your time. Get those details right. As long as we keep the guide in place, you can or make the guide part of the group, you can always go in and detail it. Now, you can't always make that guide part of the group. So if I select, select, You'll notice the guide and the group. Now when I group it, it does consider the guide part of the group. So if you're making the original Pac-Man and you're not sure it's the perfect Pac-Man, don't get rid of the guide yet. I think this is a duplicate. I don't remember which one was the original, but I don't think it had the guide in it. This one has the guide. So as long as I keep this part of the group, I could hide it to see how it looks without it and then reveal it again when I need to work with it. So guides with a tiny hull brush really is the secret to these more useful primitive shapes. Some shapes are built in like cones, cylinders. We have a really big icing tool. Especially if I lock the straight edge, we've got cylinders and that type of thing. But really, when it comes down to it, building your own shapes. The guides do actually work, but only with certain brushes. Now that I've got the lozenge shape, now I can go in with other brushes and add details to it, and the hull behind it fills it in with color. Now, if this was, for example, going to be a, 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 a fish in the ocean, now I can go with other colors and other brushes. And as long as that guide is still there, I can now add stri oops, let's turn off the straight edge as well. I can add stripes and things to the zeppelin. I can add cross lines, and it will still line up on the surface. Add it to the group or make a duplicate of the original and, and do variations. Now that you've got the primitive shapes, you can do with it what you will. So the guides are still the secret, but the hull brush on tiny, tiny mode is how you really get them sharp. I think you get the point. That's the type of thing we do here at uh, Shameless Mayhem. Teaching Tilt Brush, thanks for joining us. Let us know in the comments below if you have any questions or comments, or if you have trouble getting some of these things to happen for yourself. We do this all the time, so subscribe to our channel. Have fun tilting with brushes. Let, them, let me know and show me online the stuff you got. I'd like to see what you guys produce. Have fun, everybody, and we'll see you next time.